This short video has been designed to help you become familiar with how to use the online homework system and what to expect. The online homework system can be found by pointing your browser to this address in the top left corner, WAMAP.org. It stands for Washington Mathematics Assessment and Placement, WAMAP.org. And when you get here the first time, if you've never used WAMAP before, you want to click this link to register as a new student. If you click the link to register as a new student, fill out this form and you will be able to sign up for the class. That's what you need to do down here at the bottom. The course ID uh, for the summer and fall is going to be 4610. And the enrollment key is welcome. So be sure to type those in as you fill this out. Also be sure to click the checkbox to be notified by email when you receive a new message. That way you don't miss a message that I send to your account. Hit sign up and you'll be ready to go. Some of you have already registered with WAMAP before, and so uh, you can just sign in to your account like normal. When you sign in, also anytime, very important, you click the box that says Force Image Based Display. A lot of the features don't work if you select something else, so be sure you select that one and log in. Now, if you've used WAMAP before, but not for this class, you need to enroll in a new class, and it'll ask for that same password, 4610, and the password, welcome. And click sign up, and that will show you the summer one module makeup in the courses you're taking. When you go into this course, then, to do any of your online homework, first you're going to be asked to log into the module you're working on. To make this most efficient at responding to student questions as they have them, I've put all 10 modules into one course. So you got to make sure you're going into the correct module. Let's say I'm making up 95 module C. That means the only folder I need to go to is the 95C polynomials folder. Don't bother with any of the other folders. Those grades will not transfer over. When I go into my module, I end up with a suggested calendar. It tells me what day I should be working on which block. You'll notice there are four blocks in here. Uh, exponents, scientific notations, polynomial, and polynomial divisions. And so on July 2nd, I'm working on exponents for two days. July 4th is a holiday, then I'm doing scientific notation, polynomials, I can see what day I'm working on a block. So if I'm working on the exponent block, I can come into the exponent block. I see there are several items here. Uh, most of them have a video associated with them as you're working in your workbook. So if I go to exponents product rule, I see a video here from YouTube. I need to watch this video, and as I watch this video, I am taking notes in my workbook to fill out the workbook. Beneath the problem is an example problem that is similar to the video I just watched. This makes sure I get my concept. Um, I have to type my answer into this answer block. Now, sometimes math is a little tricky to type in, and there are a few shortcuts you might become familiar with. For example, if I want to do the fraction 2 thirds, I could do 2 slash 3, and if I hit the preview button, it looks like the fraction 2 thirds. If I want to do an exponent, maybe x to the 5th power, we can type in x, and using shift and f6, we get the caret symbol, and now when I hit preview, it looks like x to the 5th. If these are too tricky to keep track of, probably the better way is you'll also notice the little yellow arrow to the side. If I click the yellow arrow, it's going to open up a box for me where I can see something that looks like a fraction, and then I can type in the top and bottom of a fraction, three-fourths. Or I can click the little exponent-looking thing. Well, first got to do the base. This will x to the fifth power, and I can arrow out, and I get x to the fifth power. And so this guy can help me type in answers that are a little tricky to type in because sometimes, uh, especially with fractions, typing stuff in can be a little bit tricky. And when I hit save, it t puts what I needed in the box. So I can hit the submit button. When I hit the submit button, I get a ooh, 0 out of 10. Apparently, my answer wasn't correct. I do have the option to go back and reattempt that last question by clicking this first link, and I get another chance. 5 times 6 is 30, times 2 is 
60 x to the, you might remember we add these exponents, 21st power. Preview, looks like I what I want, hit submit. Now it's correct, 10 out of 10. And so now my grade book shows 10 out of 10, I can go to question 2. Question 2, I can answer, ooh, I missed it. I can try again. I'll answer maybe 9 this time, submit. Ooh, missed it, still a 0. I'll reattempt it a third time. Maybe I think the answer's 10. Hit submit. I missed it again. After I've missed the problem three times, something different happens. Down at the bottom, it shows me what the answer should have been. This is similar to looking at the back of the book, and now I can try a similar question to hopefully get it right on this attempt. Notice it had a 5 and a 2. When I click similar, now it's 5 and 8. Some of the numbers have changed. So I can do this problem now, 40x to the 17th, y to the 7th, z to the 4th, and I hit preview to make sure it looks like I want, submit, and it's correct. At the end of the assignment, I can click here to finalize the assessment and summarize my score. It shows me total points in the gradebook, 100%, and now I can return to the course page and start the next part of the exponents block. Exponents are not done until I've completed the homework assignment at the end. I need to complete all of this to complete what's day one and day two on this calendar of exponents. And then when I get to scientific notation, I need to complete all of this to complete scientific notation. And then finally, there's a practice test at the end that's going to be done near the end of my unit. Now, if I want to check my grade and how I'm doing in this course so far, I can go to the grade book up at the top, and when I click grade book, you'll see there's tons of assignments in here that are kind of color-coded by chunk. That's because this includes all 10 modules. What I can do is if I look at the bottom, I am doing 95 module C, so that is this one right here. I can see my current to date grade is 100% on everything I've completed. It's just going to show you the grades and the assignments that you've started. When the course is over on in two weeks, it will show you your grade with just the homework through the due date. Your grade with your test score averaged in there will be emailed to you as soon as the course is over. And that kind of completes our introduction to the system. One last thing I have to let you know about is let's say I'm working on a problem and I have a question. I can't figure out this problem. There is a link at the bottom that says message my instructor about this question. And if I click that link, what it's going to do is stick the problem in an email message that you can send to me and tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you did and what answer you came up with to help me isolate what your question is exactly. And then when you hit submit, that sends an email message to me and I can respond and answer your question. So hopefully this video helped you uh, figure out the answers to getting started in the homework system. Let me know if you have any other questions.